would have been up about four o'clock this morning getting your horses ready to be for about six o'clock. And you'd be walking behind two horses, a plow, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, the rain's over your shoulder kind of a thing. Yep. And uh, in a good day you get two and a half. A really good day you might get three acres done plowed. These came along and these are pulling eight, possibly ten furrow plows. Pulling faster, stronger. Uh, and again, pulling them all day long. They didn't yep. need a rest. No rest, no stop. Uh, but they're all, it also required two people up on the platform. One guy sort of operating, another guy feeding the fire all the time. Another guy pulling water out to it all day. Another guy pulling fuel out to it all day. And if you look at the plows, we have a couple over here. I think we have an eight furrow and a six furrow. There, there used to be wooden platforms on the front of those plows. Mm -hmm. And that was for guys to stand on. And their whole job was at the end of the field, at the, fir you know, at the headlands, they would pull up the shears. There's levers there. They pull up these shears so that, so the uh, yeah. so they could turn around, right? And uh, so you know when I had I'm touring grade two kids, grade two kids through here, all of a sudden one of the questions was asked, "Do you think you need to be a pretty big, pretty wealthy farm to have one of these?" And they get it. Yeah, you would be, right? But all of a sudden, this, this tractor here. This is one of my favorite pieces on the whole place. Um, it's called the Happy Farmer Tractor. Mm -hmm. This is actually 1916. This is a year older than my steam tractor. But it, the Happy Farmer Tractor had that idea, the same as Henry Ford had. Henry Ford wanted to build a car that the average person could afford to buy and operate. Yeah. Happy Farmer Tractor had that same idea. They wanted to build a tractor that the average person, farmer, could afford to buy and operate. And they came up with this. And uh, Again, it's 1916. This is pull a two furrow plow, and again, would pull faster, stronger, and all day long. And so the, the farmer was probably tripling, quadrupling his 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 participation. Yeah. You know, uh, he, with this, he might be covering, you know, 10, 12 acres a, a day. And uh, yeah. Now the reality, though, is, is this tractor was, was determined it wasn't very reliable, as you can see the engine valves and yeah. just a lot of external stuff it's not very so it's, it turned out not to be very reliable that all was often the farmers said the only there's only two good days with this tractor is the day of bottom of the day parked in the bush and uh, uh, but again it was an attempt to mm -hmm. and then between 1916 and 1920 they actually sold 20,000 of these in North America and uh, but again just terribly unreliable um, yeah Oh, and then during the Second World War, these were all pulled out of the bush and melted down for their respective metals for the war effort. And so there's, again, there's very few. Very little, metal. very few left. 1940, this is actually a year older. But again, if you look at it, it's big, it's awkward, um, and it was very expensive. So again, the average farmer couldn't afford these. So, yeah. Mobile well drilling machine. Thirteen Mogul. Rumley Oil Pole Model Y3050. Nineteen twenty six advanced oil Rumley twenty thirty five model M. Nineteen thirty seven Minneapolis Moline Waterloo. Nineteen seventeen John Deere Waterloo Boy model in twelve twenty five.
John Deere D. Bet you the majority of these tractors will start, will run. John Deere A. John Deere 830 diesel power steering. Ten thirty seven case C There's so much to film, it's probably best to see this uh, display in person because each piece of machinery has, well, so much to look at. The mechanics, you know, the size of their starters, you know, alternators or um, fuel pumps or whatever they've got, it's all... Uh, you know, there's the uh, steel tires, the pneumatic tires, whether they're turf tires, like, or field tires for, like, digging, gripping in the dirt. And Some of these I've never seen working, but I've seen some of these dozers or tractors sitting. However, some of them I've never seen before, and they're uh, kind of interesting. Probably more meant for, you know, rough terrain, uh, kind of the uh, early days of breaking ground and Some of these were pulled uh, by a tractor, most of them were, and they'd run the belt off a big pulley on the side of the tractor, and that's what would power, um, if you say power or operate, uh, this equipment. Think of the uh, thoughts in the early days, how to make the job in the field better, easier, quicker, you know, less manpower, man hours. You know, what it took to think of um, this machinery that never existed before to basically design it, build it, will it into existence. And of course, some of this has been restored or restored a while ago, and some of it is still in semi-original condition, stored in barns, stored in sheds. But yeah, I'd most definitely recommend you guys coming and uh, seeing the whole village in person because there is uh, a lot, a lot to take in. 
So it looks like we have a second barn on the property. Let's wander over to that one and see what it is. So once again, we enter into uh, what was at one time a uh, hayloft. And looks like as well, they're using the um, hall space for weddings and such as well. The uh, hip roof design is not quite as breathtaking as the other one, but it still is uh, lots of storage space up here and lots of room for activities. So this is in the process of restoration down here. So we have stalls that would have housed horses or, uh, or so. Beautiful woodworking, beautiful wooden stalls. You have the manger up front for the feed and, uh, and such. After all these years, it still smells like horses in here. Might have something to do with uh, some of the original wood, because it would soak up and take on some of the smell. But that's what gives it uh, character. Kind of neat displays of uh, pioneer times, pioneer villages, you know, some of the uh, uh, equipment they would have used, you know, horses, Clydesdales, you know, their wagons, uh, lifting devices, kind of a uh, model sort of of the case tractor that was in the other barn there the uh, combine over there and wagons and the water tank and uh, such. Imagine the hours that someone put in crafting all of this, making all of the uh, displays and hand carving and sanding and painting. Beautiful. Uh, I appreciate woodworking. Not sure if I mentioned it, probably did several times in this video. I uh, kind of inspired to be a woodworker. However, <laughs> um, patience was lacking. Um, sometimes it takes fiddling and finesse and spending hours on one tiny little piece just to get it so especially if you're doing restoration work of uh, models or building of models because really things have to be accurate they can't be Looks like a, a PTO driven uh, sickle bar mower, a little bit newer uh, technology than some of the horse drawn stuff we've seen. There's a, uh, at the very back, there's one you sit on, sickle bar, so it would take two people possibility to run. Uh, same with that guy there, and this one here. That one there might be horse-drawn with the wooden um, 
hitch pole there. Same with this one here. Diskers and plows, harrows. It's neat to uh, see the evolution, if you will, of machinery as, you know, farms got bigger, the need for bigger machinery, more efficient efficiency got higher in demand to the point where, you know, tractors come along, tractors got bigger, equipment gets bigger to, to handle the the demand and um, here we have ourselves another manure spreader imagine being the guy that sat on that seat there and operated the spreader 